ladies and gentlemen i hope you are as excited as i am for our next panel discussion the topic for this session is off me goes and chaperones a new face of customer service and engagement as we all know post the pandemic market conditions are challenging and consumers are extremely selective about products or brands they want to spend with in this scenario organizations would do well to remember this adage a friend in need is a friend indeed in terms of customer service as it could just be the differentiator to garner repeat customers or turn customers into brand custodians who freely give word of mouth referrals this session will look at understanding how a dynamic customer engagement service can orient impactful results with the help of emerging technologies In this session we will discuss key factors like data analytics and artificial intelligence better roadmap for the customer challenges customer experience and employee experience a correlation these are the make or break factors that could aid businesses to tackle the challenges they face and now ladies and gentlemen allow me to invite our esteemed dignitaries to join us live on screen may i welcome mr kamlesh vora Senior EVP and Head Customer Experience, Kotak Bank. Please also wel- welcome Mr. Gaurav Sharma, Chief Strategy Officer, Chief Customer Officer for Lenko. Hi, everyone. Also extending a very warm welcome to Mr. Samdari Basha, VP CX Design and Operations, Flipkart. Hello, good morning, folks. Please welcome Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, Head Digital and Direct to Consumer ITC Limited. And finally, our moderator Hi, for this esteemed panel, Mr. Aditya Rat, Partner KPMG. Over to you now, Aditya. Hi, good morning. Uh, we are running about uh, 30 minutes uh, by my clock, uh, but we were going to make you it make it very exciting for you. Uh, it's raining cats and dogs out here in Mumbai. and it's absolutely that time of the year where uh, things we usually are indoors but uh, this year it's been a long indoor uh, stint for all of us i hope everyone is safe you've had your first jab uh, and and or, or at least have have planned to have it sooner and it's been a little bit of a up and difficult ride for many of us so so we in case uh, somebody is unwell somebody had uh has had issues our heart goes out we absolutely want you to understand that uh, we are moderating this and discussing this in a covid situation so we are absolutely with you during these difficult times with that note uh we've been got introduced to a very a very topical topic uh it's topical because all the uh, all of us live this on on a daily basis uh customer service is not the same as it was 14 months back on possibly march 17 2020 that was the last time i formally went to office uh, after that it's been putting into the app making sure that there is distancing and i'm sure each one of us had a story to tell about it but what has fundamentally changed over the last 13 14 months is the way the consumers are looking at brands the way the brands are becoming far more transparent with what they can and they cannot do trust empathy these are become real actionable terms even in a country in india we do take trust and empathy for granted because we are a far more social country we we understand relationships differently because our social fabric allows us to do that from our birth so we are, we take a lot of things for granted but that hasn't been the case for customer success customer service and moving it forward so with that background and context what i'm going to do is that we're going to look at three or four dimensions with this amazing set of friends uh, that i have uh, had some i have worked with some i came to know during this uh, uh, period of engagement and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to uh, create a bunch of point of views for you to create your own story and take away it's very important for you to take inspiration because what fits your model could be very different than what some of the experiences we share we will try to be b to b b to b to b to c and b to c uh, uh, in in our own ways we we'll try to cover as much we can but do take your inferences and what's very interesting is that please ask us questions if you don't make it interactive it will be us giving gyan uh, which we all love to but then it's not about just us it's about spending your time that you are spending with us and making it meaningful 
with that let me just uh, start with rajneesh uh, itc great brand um, all of us have grown up some of us have worked with you during our careers uh, uh, it must have been difficult because you are you are into so many different segments you are into segments which are uh, which which would have been closed you are into segments which became very prominent in the lifestyle what has uh, what is what is the one thing that has changed in the last 12 to 14 months and and how has been your personal journey so sorry there's a helicopter out there so <laughs> there's a little bit of noise uh, we are in bangalore very close to this place so uh, yeah i mean see there are two things that have changed not only for itc I, i'm sure it is the same with uh, most uh, organizations one is the change which is the internal change which is what has happened within the organization because uh, as an organization which is 110 years old you know we are very traditional in our ways of working in the sense of we are very touchy feely you know we like to you know huddle up in conference rooms we spend hours debating on things and you know come up with solutions and so it's a, it's a very different kind of we are not a, a tech organization so to say you know we are a very home grown that kind of organization so suddenly one once you know covid hit so i i love to say this all the time that it has never been a ceo or the cto the change that they could not bring in digital transformation covid bought it so the real change agent is the covid not the cto or the ceo in most organizations and everybody had to adopt to a new way of working where you are not actually in front of your colleague and you know uh, sharing a cup of coffee but you are actually you know uh, doing the same thing over teams or zoom or wherever whatever tools and techniques were available so i think that was a huge uh, you know change internally uh, not only the technology bit of it but also the you know the way of working but everybody adapted sooner and and very quickly and that was very heartening and you know we were doing things doing large projects also collaborating within uh, like you said it's a large organization so we have to work uh, with multiple divisions multiple uh, different uh, you know branches and then get some project uh, you know going and we were collaborating so that's the internal change that i would like to talk about 12 14 months that i've seen and now everybody is very comfortable you know <laughs> uh, last week we had our excellence in marketing awards also that is also on on zoom when everybody is clapping cheering food came from i'm not that, i'm not so sure if you would have enjoyed not going out <laughs> of course i mean so you try to make the best of what you can so you know we got food from uh, you know the organization and everybody sent food packets from hotels to vision and we all opened on those and people are clapping cheering and all that and the same camaraderie to the extent it was possible we made the best of it so that's the internal thing what you get you make the best use of that and i think that that way we successful externally i think with the customers we have been very very sensitive in the way as an organization so there are two ways that we kind of interact with the consumers one is first of all as an organization itc is a larger umbrella which is mostly to do with you know the activities we are uh, doing in terms of doing good or doing making an impact or making change make, doing something for the society being a large uh, organization you are you know you are almost expected to step up and do something about the situation you know and a lot lot of that Uh, has been done and also we have communicated so the others are also inspired and you know join the the kind of forces the other thing is the brands have to be true to their purpose which is what all the positioning is and they have to make money the commerce has to go on because that's what the organization is all about now within that doing that you have to be very very empathetic in your messaging you have to be very very sensitive in your messaging you can't be selling uh, you know seen selling products uh, you know in a very a uh, brash manner when people are sick people have you know died in somebody's family and generally the atmosphere is not you know very very happy and you know it is almost you know very stressful and full of anxiety and all that so whatever you communicate while you are saying that you know i am i am ashirwad ata and it's for nutrition and this you know these are the attributes you have to be sensitive in the way it is communicated and also a lot of other things were done for like store on wheels which i will talk about you know in the subsequent this thing but right now i think this is the way i would like Brilliant. to sum it up so thanks thanks thanks, uh, thanks rajneesh uh, the god of coming to you uh, you know uh, rajneesh had a different he had to move an elephant right that's itc's years and years and here you have and you became square and center because uh, all of us uh, as anirban was thanking you just in, the, in the, when we were in the uh, when the waiting areas you know he was thanking you for the level of engagement your brand had with many of us and suddenly our homes became our offices uh, and and what was one or two things which dramatically changed for for lenko uh, on on in march 2020 and you have then carried it on over the la- the last 12 14 months 
Sure. So, so as you know, you all know that Falinko is a furniture subscription company, and uh, uh, you know, uh, as I always say, uh, we are one of the brands that actually enter people's homes, people's bedrooms, and drawing rooms, and we go deep inside. Um, you know, there was a lot of trust that we had to build in our brand, which was very, very critical for the customers. The second is, I would say. uh what we did last year was that we did something which is uh, later on we realized a lot of uh, companies struggled with that we moved the complete customer support to work from home model just before the so called janta curfew was announced in 2020 in the month of march so we did it in the first week of march itself we moved everybody to a work from home model so we got good 3 weeks to try that out to the extent that today uh, even after the second wave or in the future we don't plan to bring them back to office so that was a very big change we did because uh we wanted to stay connected with the customers uh, especially because uh, this was a stressful period for customers where uh, you know imagine a lockdown and you can't go out but there are elderly or you know pregnant ladies in the house and you need furniture who will give you that furniture in these circumstances and we went ahead and did that and the kind of love and admiration we got from our customers of course we had ground level hiccups and all that because you know you can move a lot of people to work from home model but you cannot move your warehouse your logistics team and you know it's almost like falenko was preparing for this for the last uh, many years and this was the moment of truth and rightly so we call our uh, last mile labor as champs we actually used to call them before lockdown also and i think that's off to them uh, so for us what really changed in one line is uh, we got much much closer to customers and thankfully we could prepare well in advance for that brilliant girl uh, sam uh, uh, coming to you uh, i mean you are born in the digital era uh, this was something that was uh, that you have you have been trained uh, this is almost like a commando you understand how to work but i think the expectation out of somebody like flipkart dramatically changed because you became essential you became square and center for me to deliver things which i may not have naturally come to you i would have come for a cell phone or for buying my uh, accessories or or buying uh the garments or, or fashion and stuff like that but how did what what you're already at the epitome of this but but what what was that one or two changes that fundamentally had to be brought in during these uh to to really keep the customer uh service at the levels which you always wanted them to yeah thanks for that question adit uh i think uh, see the single most uh, important thing that stands out for us uh in during these uh, past 12 to 16 months has been the need for increased empathy for three groups of customers which is one is the actual customer itself then there is the employee and then there is a seller and then how do we balance these out and 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 it was was one question we were actually grappling with now one could argue about i think to great lens about what's the right pecking order for these three groups right but uh, eventually better wisdom prevailed and then i think we eventually rallied around a war cry for this year and i think in some extent it was their last year as well right it was around <clears throat> fundamentally a war cry around 10x customer empathy okay and and uh, this need particularly got amplified i think in a few uh, very critical categories like for instance travel and then most of you must have also been at the receiving end of all of this right where in the airlines by design or by accident end up inducing a significant amount of pain for customers in the post order notes cancellations money stuck not refunding the money people losing their jobs and so on and so forth right and we could see an element of empathy there and the need for enhanced empathy or for that matter the entire workforce heading home right two categories that did see a spike right was like the electronics for instance right and you could see a lot of devices actually getting purchased by the customers and but the moment you actually talk about uh, electronic devices let's just say a laptop in a, in a, in a very basic sense right as in something goes bad now you're stuck and uh, laptops by design have a post order flow that is a little frictional in the sense that you you kind of get into trouble shooting you require to go to the service center and the service center has to have spare parts and so on and so forth right and and then you get the narrative there <clears throat> so contextually for these categories right there was a fair bit of pain that actually got amplified in in, in most of the testing terms which once again to be question back to the need for enhanced uh, customer empathy and then all these meant kind of rallying the organization internally and kind of uh, uh, putting more empathy towards the customers and also kind of ensuring that uh, we we kind of draw the balance between our employees who are unable to serve versus even the salary costs that are unable to serve as well right 
And, and then a significant effort went into aligning teams across the organization and then taking those hard calls to factor in maybe an increased cost to serve the customers in today's context. And then also on the same breath, work with the tech and the product teams to offset through a series of other interventions, how do I kind of cross subsidize incremental cost of serving customers through cost reduction initiatives. And so this kind of really stood out for us. And, and fundamentally, we got the organization to rally around how do I, incidentally, 2021 is the year of customer for us. Uh, that, that's the official stated uh, internal uh, thing for us. And then backing up with our war cry, which like you said, in terms of a 10x more empathy for customers than what we do, let's say for our colleagues and let's say for the salary ecosystem. Oh, great, Sam. Because I think, I think what, yeah, what you're pivoting on is a very important piece. And I'm going to get Kamlesh in now. Kamlesh, you never had a lockdown. A bank, I mean, there is no lockdown. You are as critical, as essential. Uh, uh, Kotak again is, is an absolutely lovable brand. Uh, all of us have had uh, several touch points with the brand. What, uh, as, as a bank which is so regulated in, an, in a regulated environment, how, what, what do you move further? I mean, you already have online, uh, uh, you know, connects with your online banking, mobile apps. Yes, your, your, your centers were on. What was, what was going on in the mind of some of you guys who were driving customer success over the last 12, 14 months? Uh, thanks, Aditya. Yeah, you are right. We are we are in essential uh, services and important for us to be available twenty four by seven for our customers and more so in these uh, trying times when there was so much of uncertainty. Uh, but at the same time, the challenge for us, Aditya, is that given this the pandemic, we had to also consider how do we serve our customers while continuing to protect our employees. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the need of the hour to maintain social distancing also ensured or made it essential that we continue to work, work with a limited capacity in the branches. Uh, a lot of us actually had to work from home uh, in the initial period. The, the, the back office was at a 30% or, or so kind of in terms of uh, uh, coming to office. So the challenge was while we had the customer facing uh, platforms available for customers to transact digitally and do things, but there are a lot of lot of transactions which are which are branch or, or infrastructure focused. How do you really move that away? And in a, you know, in the banking parlance, it's more about there's so much of concern about safety and security because it's people's money, right? Uh, you need to have your controls in place. There's a maker checker uh, uh, flow. To decentralize that structure, how do you really work from home? The call centers are a brick and mortar structure. How do you really uh, overnight? think about uh, a distributed call center. Uh, what are the challenges that you kind of we grapple with? Uh, thankfully, because we had our digital ecosystem in place, uh, while we sort kind of debated internally in terms of how do we do it? And honestly, at that point in time in March 2020, we had no visibility of how long would this last. So the, the toss was that if it's a question of just a couple of months, do we really want to uh, change the entire thing? Can we kind of, you know, just uh, do some, uh, you know, in a way that let's let's watch and see how some of the bigger brands are working. But uh, our digital systems are supporting customers, uh, so let's wait and watch. Uh, and slowly, we realize that uh, we need to really uh, take some very hard calls and you know things which were not really. Uh, it was like can't be talked about. It's a holy cow. Word challenge and said let's decentralized. Let's talk about what control systems that you can put in place. So yes, uh, that was one of the big shifts that we saw in the mindsets of, uh, of the organization that uh, tech infrastructure distributed, continuing to be still safe and secure, but available from your homes. Uh, we were all, you know, uh, and this is not just true for us, but for all of us, we were all used to, uh, as employees, depended on uh, the infrastructure that the firm provided in terms of, and we were comfortable doing physical conversations and meeting rooms. The challenge was how do you really move uh, everyone to, uh, uh, to a virtual environment? And we were all learning back then in, May, in March of 2020. Today, we are all experts. We know each of us possibly can troubleshoot our own uh, systems in terms of Zoom. Uh, if there's any some basic issues that we face, we are able to kind of uh, manage that. Shifting a large workforce uh, for us was one of the other challenges. Uh, so those were the simpler ones, you know, if I were to say that, which set us going. But the next one was that in the branch, when people do come in, how do you ensure that you know uh, your employees serve them? And like 
Samdani mentioned a very important point that you know uh, human beings are a social animal. In this trying time, as he comes to the branch and he has a need, and he comes to the branch because he needs something, and he is possibly not really conversant with the digital platforms. How do you manage to address his needs uh, in the in and ensure that he doesn't have to keep coming again and again? Uh, our investments in technology, where we had, where uh, we use the Aadhaar stack uh, very well to to really uh, authorize the transactions that the customer talked about. Even if it's a service request, uh, we ensure that the customers didn't go back with a number that you know here is your ticket number and we'll be done. We ensure that he is able to really resolve his issue for which he came for. And while doing so, he felt that the the environment was really sanitized, safe, and secure. Uh, we saw a lot of brands, you know, actually even going forward and putting their own uh, brand logos to to mark out uh, social distancing numbers, right? That you know, you need to keep so much of distance between uh, two people at the teller. Uh, to go forward further and say that you know, to people who were who were possibly not able to come, and we know that senior citizens are in some localities which were in a hard lockdown, uh, identifying uh, pockets where cash was being really consumed more. To, uh, because they were people were not comfortable with digital transactions still at that point in time. And I'm talking about the initial period, Aditya. So mobile ATMs uh, was a was a proposition that we talked about, and these are all thoughts that we kept coming up with very quickly because we saw the transaction patterns and we saw what customers were really looking for, and uh, we had to make all these shifts very very quickly. Uh, so I thought uh, agility, collaboration. Uh, while not being face to face are some of the things that we learned uh, more so in the initial periods uh, of our lockdown okay thanks thanks kamlesh i think great summary summarization rajni started with empathy uh, gaurav talked about how the, there are only this much you can do physical we went into the warehouses can't move and and, and given some a brand Sam talked about how trust and moving 10x of empathy, and you talked about how this agility would be there. That's all behind us. We are now living in this era. Uh, the 12 to 14 months of, of lockdown has taught us survival techniques, excellence. Some organizations continue to grow. That should all of us have had. We have seen the daylight, and we continue to thrive as a country. Uh, we haven't had, we have had huge challenges, but we haven't had something which is called the doomsday. But now moving forward, and God, welcome to you. Uh, in, if you, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you can, if you can, if you can maybe bring this to a little bit more pragmatic point of view, moving forward, what are the two things that you like brands to maybe start or stop or continue? Maybe two or three things going forward, yeah. which really take them to their customer excellence. And we've heard a lot of point of views, but but going forward now. So I would say definitely what has also happened is, uh, you know, for example, we uh, are a purely digital online brand. We don't have stores. And, uh, you know, we quickly realized that uh, now finally customers are ready uh, to engage with uh, brands and with, uh, you know, uh, customer service. Uh, and they now expect more of self-service DIYs uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, experience. And they would expect the brands to, you know, stop uh, reaching out for a, every small thing and actually reach out and have meaningful conversation. So I think this is a very ripe, uh, the, the only, you know, the silver lining on this dark cloud of uh, lockdowns or COVID is what I see is that we can, we, our customers are ready to be more engaging on their own while we can focus more on having deeper conversations with them and building relationships with them. They want to be heard. Uh, are we people who can hear and, you know, reach out to them? That's what I would say. So, it's a, you know, upping the game of customer yeah. service and engaging yeah. more. So, I, I hear you. So, I think I think what you're saying is that the customers are more than ready. Sam, I'm going to come to you because I, I think there is a reason why. So, we talked about this whole digital first Sam ecosystem, AI, ML, a lot of jargons get thrown in. Uh, 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 and, and Sam, when we, when we look at the Flipkart stack, you had them in past. And if you are looking uh, as, as an industry observer, and with so many of us who are listening in today, what could be those uh, digital first initiatives do you think that brands need to start, stop or continue to do? Uh, and if yes, then how? We've, we've talked about a few changes you've made because, you know, Sam, with this whole on and off lockdowns and we don't know what the next three months are, the uncertainty still is as, as it was. 
maybe there's a little bit of predictability but uncertainty and predictability are not really going hand in hand so sam with that context of ambiguity what are what are the things you would suggest that brands need to start stop and continue so thanks for that question uh, let me attempt this right in the sense that uh, so so we we call something called a 4p framework which is people process policy and then product as an example right and and i'll just put this as a placeholder for now uh, in terms of specifics of uh, what i would like to recommend start stop and continue right uh, one is obviously from a start perspective i believe we all first need to create a core set of principles for customer experience followed by a bunch of policies and then a ways of working for the rest of the organization right that is one part which i think we would be better served if we actually have that piece of something we can start uh stop obviously i think is linked to my previous response as well like i think stop demanding customer empathy and i think maybe at some levels earn it as well right and then in terms of the continue there are reasons to believe that the whole digital transformation journey needs to continue and and maybe i'll just take uh, maybe a minute or so to kind of explain this in the context of how it manifests itself for us and there could possibly be learnings for others as well right is in terms of uh, i'll take one core principle that we actually told us is right we said we will keep our promises else we will make it right at all cost now this is one core customer experience and customer service principle we said we would like to follow in relation to four more that we actually had but this this converts into a bunch of guardrails and and specifically four guardrails in our context which fundamentally gets the entire organization to actually work towards fulfilling that obligation and i just spell them out for you right guardrail number 1 is in terms of we're actually saying deliver on your commitment and uh, and and if you're unable to deliver on that right we do have a very strong guardrail in terms of how many opportunities do you get to serve the customers right and and then implicitly what we're saying is we will take not more than two opportunities to serve a customer right which practically meant that there is no third opportunity already lost the customer right and and uh, then there is also a guardrail around for instance if the customer is willing to wait in in the sole pursuit of value on our platform and and if if it's still like to give us additional opportunity right can we figure out an institutional mechanism to kind of incentivize the customer through a small token of appreciation we call it a toa in the context of flipkart and uh, purely because the customer trusted us not least said invest in the platform right because what we have seen is as an extension of this right i made a statement about no third opportunity you know this is a core construct for us and the reason for that is uh, the investment we made in terms of trying to analyze the our historical behavior patterns right around what is the probability that you will make it right for the customer on the third attempt and what we realize is i think it's an exponential decay curve there in terms of our ability to kind of deliver to the customer right which kind of somehow gets us into a fifth guard in the sequence of same principle right that actually says let's start talking about terminal actions that are favorable to customer if he did not live up to the customer expectations and this comes with a fairly material cost almost to the tune of about 20 bips as part of your entire top line approximately right wow this is something that we have consciously invested in and and you're talking about a fairly massive uh, top line here right and and that is what so in summary i think uh, there is a need to kind of create a core set of principles policies and ways of working then i think the the continue piece would be stay invested in the digital transformation journey because it's going to be paying rich dividends for sure no great great sam so i think i think i love the idea this is almost a masterclass happening here with gorav and and you bringing us in there and, and i'm sure a lot of people would be writing down i'm tempted to uh, take down notes but i hope uh, anyone we are recording this because this is phenomenally uh, great masterclass i'm going to take to the two big demos now maybe we'll start with kamlesh and then we'll go to it kamlesh banking future you know and because now you you have given us everything you have given us mobile atm you have told us that you can take our calls with lockdown or no lockdown you have told us that we don't need to now necessarily go to a, a branch because earlier it was anywhere optional now you said you can operate 100% with it you've taken care of different cohorts which you mentioned about let's say senior citizen people who need help differently able and all of that where do, what do you what do you expect somebody who is listening in here to say that what should he or she do around the start stop and continue given that it's already at that level of maturity uh uh aditya i'll just uh, defer in the sense that uh, while we are doing a lot of things uh, this is not the 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 destination the journey continues okay. there is a lot that needs to be still done so for example could there be a situation where like you mentioned that branch mein aana hi nahi pade what do i do 
uh, and the other one is that what what Sam mentioned and what Gaurav mentioned about empathy. Uh, when you come to the branch, uh, how do you really engage them? Uh, are are two extremes. You know, there are there are customers who only want to go digital, but branch may ana prata because there are certain things that you don't really be are not able to really service them. Uh, so, for example, you know, uh, and uh, how do you leverage technologies to get that going? So, in the acquisition stage, if I were to say, particularly in the lockdown, where uh, technology was available and we got regulator to back that. Saying KYC can now be done through uh, through an online mode, online. Well. So video KYC. I'm talking yeah, about video okay. KYC. So that really made a different kind of a proposition that even in terms of opening accounts, uh, I could now do that. Now that's done. Uh, that's done. The question is that how do we now pick this construct and take it to other parts of banking as well? Okay. So in bits and pieces, a lot has been done. Okay. But you know, like unlike Samdani's proposition, where you were saying Flipkart was always an online platform, and there is therefore uh, a different kind of a DNA. Or in what what Ferlanco has started as an online structure itself, banking per se has been a legacy brick and mortar structure, which is a mammoth trying to uh, transform itself. And all the platforms that have been built actually have been built on that brick and mortar structure. So the the question and the challenge for us is while this is going fine, is to start reimagining banking, and say that look and the question is that if you were to and this is not about us us I'm just talking generally that if you have to really think about creating a bank today, would it be this way that you created, or would you think differently? Okay, so the challenge for us and that's what we look for is reimagine the entire way banking could be done. Uh, today we offer everything. There is a lot that we'll continue to, like Samdani mentioned, that you know, continue on your quest of digital transformation. Uh, but that transformation, the way uh, many of us in the industry have done, is converted your paper process to digital process. Okay. Now, in a way, we can say it's transformation, but in it is not really leapfrogging. So, how do you how do you really pick up the information that you already have uh, and simplify the journey for the customer? So. One of the things, as I mentioned, KYC, the video KYC was one such approach. Aadhaar, if you were to start using it to to authenticate and authorize the transactions, is another approach in the in the in the uh, physical world that I'm talking about. So there is that's uh, the the game. The the next one is uh, today banks sit with a lot of information and a lot of data. Uh, how do I personalize it for you? N is equal to one is what we keep talking. Uh, uh, Today, customers want to talk voice. Uh, uh, how do I leverage voice? How do I get vernacular? Uh, many of us today uh, are comfortable in, in, in like it's India is too, right? It's India and Bharat. Now, the Bharat is not comfortable in English. And we are already seeing that as we launched our AI services, the chatbots in Hindi, uh, the take up rate was brilliant. Uh, the NPS of that is significantly higher than that of the ones on the hindi on the english customers today are wanting to be communicated in the language of their choice or their comfort in the place that they want to be uh, and that's therefore the question for us as bankers that how do i how do i move away from being what am i to be a part of the ecosystem and be where he is present so uh, you know for for people who are not comfortable on digital but they are comfortable on whatsapp could i be available on whatsapp and while i do so how do i create for him that comfort of safety and security because all said and done you know the the other thing which has also happened uh, uh, somebody mentioned that you know i think rajneesh mentioned ke ceos and ctos didn't possibly do so much of transformation as much as uh, covid forced and it was a more of a pull rather than a push from us that got it but along with that what we also see is that a three digit plus growth rate in terms of frauds Yes. Cyber frauds yes. are through the roof, yes. and we face it at the banking side. Cyber frauds are through the roof, so customers continuously have this challenge that while I want to go digital, how do you ensure that my account is not siphoned off? How do you ensure that I don't get really uh, uh, cheated or defrauded? Uh, and at the same time, so if you put some more security layers and and controls, इतना भी मत difficult करो कि मैं भी पैसा नहीं निकाल सकूँ आपके बैंक से, हाँ? So those are the things that you know the bank continues to work with. 
I would say. So challenges, but, challenges. I think, I think, I think, Kamlesh, yeah, this is very well put in, and I'm going to diversify a little bit, Rajneesh. Rajneesh, you are not one story. Like, uh, well, Flipkart is is a multiple stories, but you are different physical businesses. Each business has a different steer, and one size fits all doesn't go in. Now, given that, what is the future looking at the group level? And if you can just heavy, maybe dissect this according to your, let's say, to your hotel businesses, to your ready-to-eat businesses, to cigarettes business, how do you how do you move this uh, needle to to uh, within ITC? And how are you thinking of the future? Rajesh, you're on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I'm 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 a very small guy in the whole <laughs> last thing. I'm sure there are people thinking, you know, uh, how to look at a larger picture. But whatever I get a sense of it, and of course, uh, being in the role that I am, I uh, work with all the divisions. So I think first part is like you said, is to understand that one size fits all will not work. It's a cookie cutter approach will not work. Every business is different. Every business's customer is different. So if we have ITC Infotech as a business also. There, the customer is, is a different customer. It's a B2B business and largely your customers are large organizations and you are serving a different kind of client and different kind of dynamics are at play. Hotels business is very, very different business and the kind of challenges they are facing right now and they will continue to face in future as well because the whole thing is about customer interaction, people coming to your hotel, staying, so safety and, and they have been doing a lot of things. They got certified with the highest level of certification in terms of you know, uh, uh, they have a. Yes, uh, I, I have, have I have stayed with them multiple times during both the lockdowns. Yeah. So now we have a we we have a, a specific program. It is called We Assure, and it is based on a, a you know a panel of uh, people, doctors, and you know health specialists who have come together and created this program of We Assure, so that how you make sure that one use once you check into the hotel, all the facilities right from dining to you know staying are totally safe for the guest. So they have a different kind of challenge. They need to have people come in, enjoy it like they used to. They have to break a mental barrier, right? Now, coming to the FMCG business, obviously you are general trade, modern trade, e-commerce. Now our own retail is also there. So there are different four different distribution channels and everybody has their own uh, challenges. So you have to look at what is happening in modern trade. Are people coming in? How are shoppers reacting to you know, uh, you know, large malls and those shops, are they coming in, not coming in? What is holding them? What kind of value proposition you can give to them? General trade is always with the wholesalers, distributors, retailers. So how do you engage with them again? And, you know, uh, to be there always present with our entire set of merchandise for them and totally stocked in with the, at least the essentials of that. E-commerce business, which I am responsible for, is a new business, is a new distribution channel for ITC. And then the dynamics are totally different. They are our own customers. They are looking at the wider range of product delivered at a doorstep in a particular time slot that they are, you know, kind of telling us that we want you to deliver at this point in time. Again, with all the safety and security and frozen needs to be in frozen, uh, chocolates need to be, you know, at a certain temperature and all that. So each of the customer, we have to decide that, okay, what is this customer? What are their expectations from that particular business? And then look at, what are kind of problems they are facing as customers, you know, whether they are not able to go out, whether they are still skeptical about checking into the hotel or whether they are facing a problem, for example, in the FMCG business, there's a always a shortage problem. Whenever lockdown happens, everybody starts buying ATA and, and we see huge amount of jump and surge and we have to in fact take up spaces separately because to meet that demand. And we understand that it is not holding, but people are just concerned about it's a one month lockdown, one and a half month because it, there's a huge amount of uncertainty. On the other hand, I'll just take maybe one or two minutes to tell that how we've engaged with this different kind of customers. So for, so for example, people who are facing a shortage situation and feeling that we'll not be able to get the product, we started an initiative called Store on Wheels, where we went to the apartments with the entire range of merchandise from ITC, and then we sold in the apartments. Regardless of the size of the business or what we sold, it was a great gesture and it was widely appreciated. And I mean, it was, it was a great gesture from our part to reach out to the customer when they are not able to buy our products. We reached out to the moms by doing mom's magic concerts and online, you know, Instagram, we brought in celebrities, we brought in people to, you know, talk music so that because they are in stress, they are, because husbands are home. I think that's a big stress for them. So, <laughs> and children aren't going to school. You can imagine the lady of the house. Are you, know, are you trying to earn brownie points on this? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just saying, you know, you have to do something for them. And then because the brand Mom's Magic, which talks to moms, right? So you look at different sets of consumers, look at what they are going through, 
what is it that they're expecting from the brand or the organization and then accordingly you know uh, work with them i think that's that no no i think i think it's it's, it's a great segue and we're going to come into the last one i'm going to merge up maybe a couple of point of views and sam will start with you sam what's the recipe for tech because i think a lot of our colleagues and, and I've, i've done few of these sessions with et a lot of our colleagues in in the in the in the, in the audience want to know what's the recipe for tech one or two tech uh that you think going forward you go to embrace is it uh, getting your data correct getting your crm getting your ads correct what's the tech looking like and sam uh, something that people have to stop doing i want to w- put you on the spot and i'm going to go around something that you say that hey stop doing this uh in past we have had examples like stop procrastination you got to do it now <laughs> don't keep planning planning you got to go ahead and start doing that uh, digital uh, many a times many of our colleagues in the industries have come back and said uh, digital is no more a responsibility of cdo as as rajneesh said or a cto it's now yours in the front line so customer success or so sam and and this whole we, we talked about hyper personalization sam yesterday i want to provoke you what do you believe in that so so few thoughts to you sam we'll start yeah, with sure. you and then we we'll move around <laughs> sure so let let me just give two pointers uh, here adi uh, one is i think uh, structurally for the tech organization right uh, the whole piece around the need for a continuous stream of solutions and features that need to be introduced i think from time to time as customers get digital and so on and so forth right and and going by the i think if i were to contextualize this let's say to online commerce or let's say the digital commerce service right uh, there is a massive 1 billion kind of plus kind of a constructed in the country multiple languages and so on and so forth so capabilities that can significantly ease the new user onboarding process and as a case in point we have the next 400 million construct as an active thread in the organization that consumes a humongous amount of energy which includes if i may give very specific examples right the ability to give targeted discounts to select cohorts of customers right or for that matter having new affordability constructs for the underserved customers right and and what i mean by that is in terms of something as simple as and 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 maybe not simple is the right not the right term here right something called a multi card debit emi you must have heard a single card emi right you must have heard a credit card emi but we're talking about a multi card debit card emi right that that's the some this thing and then i think fundamentally somehow up the game in terms of trust markers to enable the entire journey because the starting premise for most of the organizations needs to be uh, while while i think uh, our colleagues spoke about let's say the whole cyber crime right which is basically uh, some culprit inflicting pain on the customers but let's also not shy away from the fact that we do have a fair bit of customers that end up getting blacklisted as well because of a variety of reasons right and then the corrective narrative there becomes innocent unless proven guilty i think you actually start from that construct right to support that construct of innocent unless proven guilty and be very smart and sharp about it right significant investments in let's say trust and safety infrastructure as well so that's one thing with that right and then the other piece is in terms of some attempt to and rather and 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 some investments to ensure that you have a good understanding of the customer as well right and at some levels i'd like to make a statement that voc i think is a little dated i think voc needs to morph into aoc which is the actions of the customer Uh, which which fundamentally means if organizations can have the requisite data infrastructure and and the data savviness to kind of somehow link the the experience of the customer to the voice of the customer and then close the loop to the actions of the customer so it's the experience voice and the actions right if this can work like a very nice flywheel for the organization i think at least we would have reasons to believe that's a investment and time well spent for an organization that's great Great. I, I'm getting uh, consoled that the next speaker is ready, so they're running short of time for us. But Sam, apologies if I have to cut in. Kamlesh, you got thirty seconds or maybe a minute quickly. What's your road to stop, and what's your digital uh, answer to some of our questions? That what 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 should people embrace? Uh, I think uh, what Sam mentioned, and I would just add on to that. I agree with the investments that he mentioned in terms of uh, uh, tech for. cyber crime uh, in terms of infrastructure to give security comfort to the customer getting to know that he is the right customer is something which is very critical and we are all we are working on that uh, the other one uh, is about uh, bringing all data points uh, in a, in a banking environment uh, for for example there are multiple systems uh, which kind of and there are product processes as we call them how do you bring all that information together uh and are able to connect uh that to 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 actually look at the customer journey uh not just the voc but voc with the journeys 
uh, give you some more insights of what are the customer frictions and where the the, the dropouts do happen and what really frustrates the customer. I think those are the places to to make investments to get in insights on, and thereafter you continue building out your digital properties or infrastructure, but based on that premise. So that's what I would. Thanks, thanks, Kamlesh. Rajneesh, coming to you. Any 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 views on digital versus what do you want our colleagues to stop not do? <laughs> so one thing, obviously, coming again from the point of view of uh, you know being more sensitive and human is that don't. show a bravado if you are doing well in business a lot of people are not doing well in business different businesses have affected been affected differently i think it's important to understand that and i think one more thing that i would like to say is that when you say embrace what so i say embrace change because this is a huge change it's a black swan event and huge amount of changes happened and things which were never i mean somebody told you you will be locked up in your house for 2 years you know <laughs> you would have said what, what are you talking about and all uh, essential all services us, will be provided to you <laughs> right right so it's it's almost a huge change so embrace change i think and change brings opportunity look at where the opportunity is and do it in a manner that is sensitive and human i think that is what my brilliant mind. brilliant rajneesh gorav so i'll i'll just take 30 seconds uh, you know it's very simple for us uh, we want to go more and more uh, digital so we are playing with augmented reality so that people don't ever have to miss uh, going and i think people are now used to just staying at home meeting a doctor also online not waiting for the doctor for 3 hours in the hospital so same for furniture and the second i would say definitely uh, let's stop uh, generalizing customers we need to have more personalized experiences it is important what people say about you and your brand but it is also very important how passionately they talk about it good or bad Absolutely. Thank you, Gaurav, Rajni, Sam, Kamlesh. You have been absolutely brilliant. If anybody was listening, I think a big four person, he would have written a good proposal and it's out for delivery. Just put in a few fees, and I'm assuming that you guys will all work on that job. Nepa, uh, from my side, as a concluding remark, is meet the customer where they are, not where you are, uh, because we all are at different points. We all are at different emotional levels right now. We all are different co- constructs in our life. So absolutely thrilled. We I know we have run out of time, but if you have questions, you can write down to the moderators out here. Uh, we'll find a way to through Anirban and and Shashank to reach out to you. But but thank you so much for having us. This has been a wonderful, wonderful panel who have opened their hearts and shared uh, whatever uh, they could in in terms of their ideas. So thank you so so much, Neva. Over to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Aditya, and of course to all of our esteemed panelists for such an informative session. We segue through the challenges and experiences of different undu- industries in this session, and it is fair to reiterate that. Uh, wholesome empathetic customer service acts as a salute for all businesses so once again i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and sharing your knowledge with all of us um now ladies and gentlemen are you ready to unlearn the old ways so that we can welcome the new that is what we will learn in the next session taking a short break we'll be back soon <laughs>